Do you have a couple of replays ready that we can uh, go? Yeah, I, I actually only have one replay of that specific, and it kind of gets into this weird late game where it goes on for a very long time, but you can okay. kind of see the difference. So uh, I'll invite you to the party, and we'll load those up. Perfect. All right, got that. All right, you ready? Absolutely, go for it. <clears throat> okay, so long story short, this game is like a 58 minute long game where <laughs> I end up trying to do the mass swarm hoats, uh -huh. but I end up ultimately losing because he has a bait, he takes the base to the bottom left. And I and I mined myself out because I wasn't uh, I wasn't uh, expanding aggressively enough near that late game. Yeah, that and, that'll happen. Yeah, especially with swarm hosts too, because it's yeah. so mineral intensive. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. So uh, that's basically what it kind of comes down to. Uh, I th but I keep trying to pick engagements with uh, the Prodoss player because I um, know I'm ahead. Do you want to go faster times two? Sorry, it, it'll lag oh. pretty hard. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And so... And I think the other thing that I, besides that that I struggle with is uh, ZVP openers. Okay. I've been doing the 14 pool, 16 hatch, and then if they do a forge fast expand, or a fast expand at all, then I go uh, 20 to t 21 uh, third hatch. Okay. Um, you can do a 15 pool instead of a 14 pool, so just do a 15 pool, 16 hatch. Um, mm -hmm. You can just delay that pool a little bit. You don't really need it out um, at 14. And then um, I would actually say that if you scout the Forge Fast Expand, um, rather than waiting for um, more drones, you should just go ahead and take that third as fast as possible, which, I mean, you know, 21, 22 is, is pretty quick. But, you know, um, just as soon as you scout that Forge Fast Expand, just take that third base. Because mm -hmm. um, if you can get it down um, sub four minutes, um, that's the best case scenario for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to recommend uh, within your ZVP is to get overload speed. So your first 100 gas will go towards laying speed. Mm -hmm. um, your next 100 gas will go towards overload speed. And then you can choose if you want to pull off of gas and, and you know keep droning really hard. Um, or if you just want to stay on gas and go ahead and go up the layer and get those upgrades going. Yeah. Um, but I would I would recommend getting overload speed every single time versus Protoss. Um, that yeah. way you just I've been doing have that, that against scout. Terran, uh, mm -hmm. obviously because of Widow Mines and uh, Overseers, and then Overlords probably would be good uh, scouts. But uh, ZVP yeah. two is this. Okay, yeah, I see Overlord speed being a lot more handier and harder. Um, okay, pause for a second. Yeah. Uh, these twenty eight lings that you made right here, um, stuff like that is it's gonna hurt you a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, I. Uh, um, Did you have a reason for making them? Um, yeah, I thought I scouted something that I, that warranted it, but okay. Actually, um, now that I'm looking at the vision, I don't see anything at this point in time. So yeah, because generally, you know, Protoss will they'll, they'll come out with this little zealot mothership mothership core stalker harass, um, but you can usually hold that with like two queens and I mean even just one queen um, and you know like maybe ten zerglings. But making um, 28 zerglings like that, you know, that's yeah, that's, that's 14 very... larvae mm -hmm. that you that you're not turning into drones. Um, yeah. And so at this point, you're at 31 drones to 27 probes mm -hmm. with only four larvae, um, and that's just that's not a good place to be in. Um, yeah. You definitely want to try and drone as hard as you can um, in that early game. But just just a little overreaction there. And yeah. I think a lot of that does come down to your scouting as well. Like you said, you thought you saw something, but um, you know, say you you had gotten that overload speed, like we were talking about. Yeah. Um, you would have known for sure, and you would have known that um, you know, all he's got are two gateways, um, and and you wouldn't have had to make all of those links. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just little things, though. Okay, we can. We oh can yeah, continue. definitely. Game resume. Oh, I okay. I, I see where I saw the scout. It was uh the watchtower at the bottom. I saw the okay. zealot, and so. I presume there's a mothership core, and then the pylon went down, so 
Uh, that is a lot of links now that I'm looking at it a little closer. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, you know, you stayed safe. You, you definitely made sure that you were going to be okay. Mm -hmm. But um, just, just a little bit of an overreaction. And, and yeah. that's what Protoss wants out of you at this point, is, is an overreaction. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what that's designed to do. I mean, granted, this game he is going for some sort of weird all-in. Um, it's a really, really horrible all-in, um, mm -hmm. but it's an all-in nonetheless. So, you know, those lings are okay. They're they're gonna fare well for you, um, and especially with this Overlord in there now that you see those gateways in Stargate. Um, yeah. Because that's what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gateways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And double Stargate. Yeah. So he's. I mean. He can't actually support all of this, but um, regardless, you know, you see a lot, and so you know you need to start preparing for, for something big. Um, at this point, I would not have taken that fourth base. Mm -hmm. um, that, that hatchery is really, really greedy right now, because you know that he's going to do some sort of two base all in, and yet you're saying, I'm going to hold your two base all in with four bases, yeah. whenever it's already going to be hard to hold with three bases. Mm -hmm. um, so just a little thing, um, and you're still droning right now. Um, yeah. Big no no, big big no no. Um, you know, you, once you scout those seven gateways, you need to get up to like, because okay, you're at 82 drones. Um, so that's gonna make this hold really really difficult for you, especially if he has yeah plus one as well. Um, so you know, you really want to just get to like a good like two and a half three base saturation against the two base all in, and then just start pumping out units at that point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got a fantastic economy, so if you hold this, you are leagues ahead. Um, but we'll see how it goes. It's a good hold so far, though. With, uh, I believe it's only killed six workers. So oh, yeah, you're in, you're in a fantastic position. Mm -hmm. but let's see how it then. continues. Um, you're... Not using your larva for some reason. Oh, your supply block. Okay. Yeah. I was like, you could be making a lot of hydras. Yeah, yeah, no. Supply block probably the biggest blunder that I have uh, in my mechanics. Mm -hmm. so. um, one thing that I can tell you is, um, as a Zerg player, whenever you see um, an attack coming out, mm -hmm. the first thing you should do after starting as many units as you can is make, like, seven, you know, six or seven overloads just so you open up that supply. Yeah. Because the last thing you want to have happen to you during the actual battle itself is to get supply blocked. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing that you did is you, you pulled all your queens away from the hatcheries. Or well, no, you just had a lot of queens. Okay. Yeah, no, I've, I've been experimenting around with a heavy queen style. And it's good. It's good, especially in conjunction with swarm hosts. Oh, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you're actually, you're in a fantastic position right here. Yeah. You know, you're, on, you're on four bases. He's taking a you know, his, his third base right now, um, but what you need to be doing is pressuring. Um, mm -hmm. You really need to be out on the map and, in, and asserting your, your presence with these units because, let's see here, yeah, you're, you're almost doubling his army supply right now, mm -hmm. um, so you really need to be making use of those units after you make them, um, at, at least seeing what's going on, because you're kind of sitting in the middle of the map and, and you're still being really defensive whenever you know that you've held that attack, um, and you really just need at this point to go and, and kind of poke in. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're just... You're How do you deal with really the, uh, the uh, like third bases closed. that they mass cannon up? Um, um, that right now... I mean, that's what I was going to do with the swarm hosts. But, I don't know, I feel uh, like it, you either attack the third, which has uh, which usually when I play against Protoss, they've been favoring heavy, heavy cannons. Or you go into their natural, and you, you see, I mean, it's just not kind of a good... Um, one thing that you can think about whenever you see a Protoss, um, especially on just on their third base with mass cannons, um, a fourth base or a fifth base, something like that, um, it, it's more normal to see a lot of cannons. Mm -hmm. But if you see if you see like six or seven or even like ten cannons at a third base, the first thing that should go through your head is he just spent a thousand minerals on cannons on static defense. Yeah. So his army is going to be essentially useless. Like he's not going to have much there. Mm -hmm. um, so what you, your reaction should be in that situation is to tech up as fast as you can. Um, and like you're doing right now, you're, you're expanding, you're taking all of these bases, you know, you're going to be on soon to be six bases to his three. Um, so you're, you're playing this perfectly, you know, you've got a lot of gas banked up, you're, you're in a really good position. Um, your drone saturation is a little bit lacking. Um, you're at 62 drones, you could be at a few more, you know, you've only got um, 10 on that, that third base and then five on the, um, the fourth. Um, yeah, so, yeah. so just a, a few more drones would have been okay for you, um, but 
Let's see here. What's your production? Yeah, you really just you need to be aggressively teching at this point. Um, you, you should have gotten those swarm hosts um, upgrades. You know, you should have been continuing your upgrades right now. You're you're sitting on on stagnant Evo chambers, which you never want to do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then you know, just start getting those swarm host upgrades ready. Uh, start throwing down some static defense and just try and keep him contained to three base. Um, because if you can take six, seven, eight bases and keep him on three. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that Protoss is never going to beat you because you can just keep tech switching and keep throwing different army compositions at him. Yeah. Um, so you're playing this really well right now, you know, and you're about to trade off some of this for a charger, which you need to be doing at this point. You need to be um, getting rid of it. And let's see how much larva you have. Yeah, you've got 85 larva, so you are in a fantastic position. Yeah. Okay. So let's see how this game ends up going to 58 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm, I feel that I play very passively when it's ZVP because mm -hmm. uh, it's just I just don't like playing against uh, uh, big Protoss death balls. What you what and, you need to be doing at this point is like is trading with your army. Um, you know, you're sitting on Roach Hydra right now, and it's just gonna keep getting more and more cost and efficient as the game goes on. Yeah. So you need to trade away just like that, like trade away some units and replace them with higher tier units. So um, I want to see what you make here with this free supply. Um, drones, and, and that's okay. That's, that's okay. If you're the only thing is if you're gonna go swarm hosts, you need to stay um, at 65 drones or less because the swarm hosts eat up so much of your supply that if you have too much supply tied up in drones, um, you actually won't be able to get enough of, um, of an effective army composition because mm -hmm. the swarm hosts take up so much of that army supply. Yeah. Yeah, I, I honestly, I just feel like you're not teching enough. Um, you should be getting, you know, greater spire right now. You should be throwing down an ultraless cavern, um, you know, another evo to start those those upgrades. Um, you, you know, you're starting the melee now. Mm -hmm. Um, but you, you really, whenever you get into a situation like this, what you need to be doing is opening up every possible tech path for you, because that's how you win ZVP, is, um, you know, trading an army comp and then remaking a, a, like a completely different one. Um, so big muta switches are really good, um, mm -hmm. things like that. So you could, you could be preparing for that right now. You could be getting all of that tech ready, but instead you're, you're kind of just sitting on this Roach Hydra composition and banking up 10k, 10k, um, and you're not really doing a whole lot with it. Um, mm -hmm. Granted, you're playing a really good game right now. Um, you just you need to be a little bit more active with your army um, and trade off that Roach Hydra because, you know, 27, 28 minutes into the game, the last thing you want to be doing is defending at your bases, like you're about to do, with Roach Hydra against a Colossus army. Um, you know, right now you would want to have Brood Lords or a ton of Swarm Hosts or um, Ultralists popping you, something like that of a, of a higher tier to be able to deal with this army. And the static defense is good. Um, I, I really like that, especially in conjunction with Swarm Hosts. So. Oh yeah, definitely. So. But see, like right here, you know his army is so far out of position that if you were to just go and attack that third base right now, mm -hmm. it would take him so long to get back over there, and you would be able to trade off cost efficiently and then replace that Roach Hydra army. Um, another thing you could do if you if you find out you know that you're in the late game and you've got like. 40 supply of roaches that you just don't want anymore. Mm -hmm. um, is just go ahead and drop it as well. Just drop his main, um, drop the mineral oh, yeah, that's true. like that. Because mm -hmm. um, you do, you want to get rid of those roaches. Um, and then remaking hydras right now was a bad decision. Um, because yeah, you know but... that he's got uh, three colossus. Mm -hmm. So the last thing you want are more hydras. Um, you really should have put all of that supply into swarm hosts. Um, or maybe even into uh, like corruptors or something like that, just to, or not even corruptors. Actually, you, you need vipers right now. Is what you need. Mm -hmm. um, Swarm host viper is probably one of the best compositions in the game, especially whenever it comes to ZVP. Um, and I, I find a lot of people are, are just not making vipers. Oh, and then you lose swarm yeah. host. Yeah. I mean, granted, you've got ten thousand minerals and ten thousand gas, so it's not a huge deal, but. And this is good, this counterattack is exactly what you need to be doing. Because if you can force him to be on a single army composition for the rest of the game, like have one strong army, and you have the ability to tech switch, you know, like three times with the amount of money you have, you're in a position to win that game easily. So that was good, that counterattack. Um, but like I've said, you know, you just you really need to be opening all those tech paths up in the late game. Okay, yeah, that definitely makes more sense.
Mm-hmm. And that because that's that's how Zerg wins games is through the use of tech changes. Um, because all the Protoss is going to do is he's going to counter that army composition. He's just going to build up an army that's going to counter Roach Hydra Swarm Hosts. Um, and so you have to be able to catch him off guard once he kills your army with something that's going to counter what he has. Yeah. Yeah, and losing the Swarm Hosts, of course, is bad. Oh, you, oh, you almost get a snipe that. Put it in close. And I like the I like the mass swarm hosts. You just have to be careful because you have to have something to protect them as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I honestly I think if you just had vipers, you would have won this game. Mm-hmm. Let's see, yeah, he's sitting at. What's that? So oh, has his three colossus. Archon. Or... Yeah, because I mean the thing is, he has to have those Colossus to yeah. deal with the Swarm Host. He absolutely has to. Mm -hmm. And so if you get those Vipers out, I mean he has no High Templar to feed back. Um, it, you know, nothing like that. So the, all, those, all it takes is, you know, four or five good pulls and uh, mm -hmm. you've won the game. Because then your Swarm Host can just push and, uh, and end it at that point. getting his bases up. Yeah. And that's what he needs to be doing at this point. And you're, you're doing a good job of denying them. I mean, you have been throughout the entire game. Those Hydras have remained pretty cost efficient in a game where they really shouldn't be. Oh, yeah, and he's gonna go right around you. Ooh, that was a bad fight. Okay, yeah, so you, and then you made more Hydras right here. Um, and after you just watched all those Hydras get completely melted, that should have been, uh, you know, a big clue. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> not to, <laughs> to make more. You have a tendency to try to force unit compositions. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but, yeah, so I think the basic message for this to take away is, uh, is, uh, opening tech pass so I can rebuild different compositions. Okay, yeah, like and, and definitely not getting stuck in one composition because you've been you've been on Hydra Swarm Host for like twenty minutes now. Yeah, yeah. And that that's just not something you want to be doing as a Zerg player. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's let's go ahead and equip this. Um, so I'm gonna play Protoss against you, and we're just gonna take it into you know a pretty standard game. Um, I'm gonna try and go a little bit longer. Um, and what I want you to do is just is. Focus on expanding, getting your creep spread up the same way you did that game. Um, you know, being a little bit more aggressive with your units and your scouting, mm -hmm. um, but then opening up all those tech paths and, and just really focusing on um, the tech the, the tech switches that you need to be doing to be able to beat Protoss players. Yeah, certainly. And I haven't played Protoss for a while here, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> You ready then? Uh, one second. Okay. Ready when you are. All right. Starting down. But yeah, because I mean, you you put yourself in such a good position in that game. I just feel like you had trouble kind of following through. Ending it yeah, and, and, and finishing. Yeah. Because to be quite honest with you, I mean, you you should have just stomped over him. <laughs> mm -hmm. I apologize for any uh, horrifically horrendous play. Ah, uh, no worries.
Although PvZ is a pretty good matchup for me. So. It's currently my worst matchup, but that's because I kind of get lost later on in the game. Yeah. As you just witnessed there. So. I mean, in, in ZVP is, is a difficult matchup in the late game as well. It's, it's I mean, anything against Protoss in the late game is, is difficult. Uh, you really just don't want to let Protoss get up to like, um, you know, a really stable, uh, high base economy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I notice when I go 14 pool, 16 hatch, I don't have enough money once that pool appears. Because the point of the early pool is to get uh, the fence out, if I, if I recall mm. correctly why. Uh, started implementing that once the Forge Vastage command got out because of uh, pylon blocks and such. But yeah, um, and you, you really, 15 pool is, is plenty of time to be able to do that. Um, the 14 pool is just, it's just a little unnecessarily fast. Mm -hmm. So you think a 15 15 opener would be better? Uh, 15, um, sorry, uh, 15 16. 15 16. Okay, got it. Kill that probe. Uh, you very well could have. Yeah, I think you did. <laughs> I didn't hear it die, and I looked away for two seconds. Yeah, I uh, stopped paying attention to it though. Gateway and a cannon. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty standard. Uh, not sure it should be out there in the living room. See if it's hung up on the door. Thank you. 
Yeah, that would definitely be uh, beneficial for you. Yeah. I feel like I lost. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was not worth that. Yeah.
lot of wow. Um, okay. That is wrong. So you opening up those tech baths? Yep. Mutation. 
So the, the mutant transition was actually a, a smart idea. Mm -hmm. um, and you did a fair amount of damage to that base with it. Um, I think it just needed to come a little bit sooner. Because uh, you still gave me a lot of time to, to yeah. get up to that really heavy four base economy to where you know I can make whatever I want. Um, and you don't want a protest to be in that position. But yeah, you, you had the right idea. I think you just you didn't do it fast enough. Um, mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll watch the replay and, and kind of see. Yeah, sounds good. But I mean, that's exactly what you want to be doing. Um, I just think while you were doing that, you also needed to be going up to, to Hive mm -hmm. and really focusing on getting those um, uh, Vipers out as well. And that's purely for the Abduct, correct? Uh, the, I mean, the Abduct, but also Blinding Cloud. Um, there are a lot of situations where Blinding Cloud is, is really beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, actually, let me check on my rice really quick. One sec. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Had some rice cooking Had to make sure yeah. it was out. Well, early game ZVP, it's all pretty standard. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, you, you definitely had the right idea with that, though. And you know, Needle's transition is, is really good. Um, mm -hmm. And you had the, the, right, the right idea not to make corruptors as well, because um, the last thing you want to do is make corruptors against Voidgers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's try to figure out a way to deal with the uh, deal with the void rays. I felt really good about the muta transition, 
if it was just sticking with the uh, the Colossus, but with the Void Rays in there. That's what I was trying to figure out what I should do. And um, Muta's, Muta's actually beat out Void Rays. You actually, you lost a lot of Muta's when you didn't have to. Um, you were kind of running away from those Phoenix, but what you want to do whenever you're microing against Phoenix is you want to try and stop and, like, catch the Phoenix um, as they're running into you. Yeah. So you really want to be, like, jumping back and forth with your Muta's because... Um, you know, Phoenix definitely do counter mutas, but if you micro like well with them, and um, what you like, I said, what you want to do is you want to kind of want to run and keep like the Phoenix trailing along with you, yeah, and then stop suddenly and let them run into you and land some of those hits. Um, That's there a was good a point. point because I know I caught you off guard a couple times where I would uh, go towards you. Uh, it wasn't exactly in the stop motion, but mm -hmm. yeah, um, oh, but yeah, point. I mean, you, you lost like. 15, 20 mutas to like 6 phoenix, um, mm -hmm. you really didn't have to, because I didn't even have a range upgrade either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I think you just, you weren't quite cost efficient enough with your mutas, but, um, we'll see. Mm -hmm. And so you, you see that, you know, that forge fast expand, and so you went ahead and took that third, and fairly quickly, that was good. And I completely forgot to deal with that drone, so you just got full vision of the Stargate. Mm -hmm. Only took out two drones there. Mm -hmm. I, I only got one. Oh, did you get one? Mm -hmm. I see two. I see a hundred resources lost for two units, so... Yeah, I killed the, the drone that was in my main as well. Oh, yeah, that's right. And so in this game, I actually I played really greedy, and I took a really really fast third. I saw that. I was really confused by that. Uh. Uh, and that's a situation where you should be um, trying to punish that as well. Um, your layer in this game is pretty slow. Uh, you definitely should have had it started already. Um, you know, generally, because you go up to six gas here, um, you're not really mining efficiently from all of them. Um, but if you're on six gas, you need to be um, on layer as well. So I would go ahead and get layer around seven minutes, maybe a, a little bit sooner than that. Um, but waiting this long for it, it, it just delayed your hydros way too much. Because if you had um, if you had layer ready right now and you were able to make like twenty hydros, you could have probably killed my third base. To be honest with you, because I didn't have much of anything. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, yeah. I don't even have a, a robo right now, so. Um, you know, that, that layer was just really delayed for you, and I think so far that's the first thing that, that has hurt you quite a bit this game. Um, droning was actually pretty good. You could use a, a few more. Um, and you need to start thinking about taking that fourth base, too, because um, the second you see a third base out of a Prothos, you either need to kill it or expand. Um, you can't just sit on three base, three base. And, you know, you did take that fourth, but it was just really delayed. Um, you should have taken it either as soon as you saw the fact that I was taking a base, um, or, uh, or you should have been attacking. Mm -hmm. But you're still you're in decent shape. Oh, so that's where that zealot came from. He was at the watchtower. Got it. Oh, that uh, pylon? And that pylon too, yeah. I was trying to figure out what that pylon was. I just <laughs> thought I missed it. Like the legs just took it out, and I thought I missed it. But pretty sneaky spot. You actually had an overload that scouted it, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, it's such a small speck on the map. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And that ling run by was close. You almost got in there. Yeah. And so at this point, you know, you're, you're still making those Hydras, um... Well, I think this is the first time I started pumping out Hydras, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right as well. Um, but the thing is, if you're gonna make Hydras this late into the game, like on 4 base, um, you really need to have something else to accompany it other than just Roach Hydra. Yeah. Um, you're about to go up against a max Protoss with um, only Roach Hydra, and that's just, I mean, it doesn't even matter what composition I have, really, unless it's all gateway units, um, mm -hmm. you're not gonna, you're not gonna win that fight. Um, so you really, again, your, your hive is kind of slow. Um, 
I would throw down that infestation pit a little bit sooner and try to get up to your hive um, maybe around this time, have your hive finish instead of um, just starting to think about taking it. Um, you know, like right here, I, I probably could have pushed in and just killed you. Yeah. Um, you know, taking that army out, but I um, wanted to give you a little more time to, to try and work on those tech switches. But yeah, I, I think you, you really need to, to start working towards that hive tech because um, ZVP is it's all about that rush to hive. It's um, do I get to hive before the Protoss gets to the army that you know he wants? Mm -hmm. um, and if you let that Protoss get up to a Void Ray Colossus, you know Archon Death Ball, um, it's just going to make that late game so much harder for you, especially if you're not even on hive tech. Mm -hmm. So really work on, you know, while you're expanding your tech as well, also teching up um, and doing it a little bit quicker. This yeah, is good. That's... Though. You're making use of those units again. I mean, you're, you're pulling me back, keeping me from attacking you and, and buying more time, um, which is exactly what you need to do. So yeah. good on that part. And then when you see this part? Uh, should I be going for probe kills or should I be going for taking that sniping infrastructure? Or is it just purely to pull your army Anything. Out? Anything, anything. Um, you need to be doing everything you can without losing the mutas. Um, you need to retain the muta count. Um, you know, keep a presence on the map, but all you're really trying to do with the mutas is keep me from killing you. Um, because when, when you've got those mutas out on the map, it, it's going to make it so that I have to either defend or base trade with you. Um, and that's, you know... Okay. Those, and Snake right here, he's the Phoenix that killed so many of your mutas. And you do pick a couple of them off. And then those four days come in. Yeah, you just you can't overcommit with the mutas like that. Like if you feel like they're in danger, you have to pull them back and then come back in a bit later. Yeah. Um because you losing all of that, you just lost like two thousand minerals and two thousand gas right there. Um and you just can't afford to do that. <coughs> Meters, yeah. I think you just you, you make too many hydras um, is another thing that you do. Um, you know, you, you kind of want the hydras for the DPS and like that, that added damage, but you never really want a composition that's purely hydra. And right now you, you just have a few too many. So maybe try and, and stick around like 15, 20 hydras instead of um, going up to so many. Um, and then that's like a maximum number, you know. Yeah, certainly. And again, you did you did that same thing that you did before in those replays. Is you lost a bunch of hydras and you remade a bunch of hydras. Um, and what you could have made right there were, um, you know, corruptors or even more mutalists would have been, um, you know, a decent decision, as opposed to the hydras. Yeah, because I mean, I've got a pretty heavy air dominance right now, so you either need to get enough corruptors to be able to deal with all of that air, which would be like 40. <laughs> yeah. Um, or take the mutas, and, and rather than engaging right there, you really should have gone over and tried to base trade with me. Mm -hmm. um, because I have to go and kill all these hatcheries, and, and so you can just take your mutas out and try and force that base trade. Because you're not going to be able to win with uh, mutas in that straight up engagement, especially since they're not upgraded too. Yeah. The zero one mutas against um, three three ground and then uh, plus one air, um, and that's just not going to fare well for you. So if you get into a situation like that where you're in a late game and the Protoss is, is pushing out and they're killing all your bases and you've gone for this big muta transition and you have all these mutas now and, and you're trying to figure out what to do with them, instead of engaging the army, force that, uh, you know, that base trade or at least try and force the Protoss back a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, that was, that was a lot better. You definitely transitioned out of Roach Hydra. Again, I just, I don't think you did it fast enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so do you have just like uh, maybe one more replay we could go over? Yeah, yeah. Or even if you just have like some questions or anything like that that I can help you with. Um. Yeah, I think I'm good with the. Uh, let's go over the ZVZ replay. That goes. That kind of okay. actually aligns with my. Uh, uh, with the question I have here. Um, okay. I've noticed that my ZVZs that I play when I. Uh, uh, I find that my opponent goes mutilist ten times faster than I do. 
And mm -hmm. I think it kind of comes down to the same thing as what's going on with the ZVP with not teching fast enough. Yeah. But let's go over this just to... It probably is, and ZVZ is a very volatile matchup, and getting to mutas is always a difficult course because you have to worry about those, um, you know, that early aggression, and then if you tech too quickly, you're not going to be prepared for some sort of all-in. Um, but what it really comes down to is scouting. Um, mm -hmm. And so you, you constantly have to be sending, whether it's an, you know, an overseer, an overlord, or uh, whatever it is into your opponent's base, or even just like a couple lings um, from time to time, but you have to know if they're making drones or if they're making units, and then you react to that decision. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, let's go over that replay and let's see how it goes. Oh, I, I didn't go into the replay with you, did I? <laughs> oh, I think, yeah, you, did you just start it on your own? Yeah, I, I started. Yeah. So I used to Wings of Liberty. <laughs> I still do the same thing. Alright. Watch with others. There we go. Yeah, I think uh, I think the difference I noticed between uh, Silver and Gold League and then with uh, Platinum League with the games I've been playing is that in DVT is that we stay on link, main link a lot longer in lower leagues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I even I like link, main link play. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I actually, whenever I played Zerg vs. Zerg, I didn't, I didn't play a whole bunch of Muta play. Mm -hmm. um, I, I used to do a 2-2 two -two mid game style with speed links. Mm. Um, and basically what you do is you just you constantly counterattack and you force him to keep his mutas at home while you tech up to infestors. Yeah. Um, and it's it's really strong, but it it all kind of depends on how the first engagement goes, like if you're able to get some good damage done with your first pack of lings. Mm -hmm. um, but if not, then you kind of end up on the defensive and then they have enough banelings to take care of your lings and it gets really tricky. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of ZBZ, especially not in the current meta. But um, mm -hmm. we'll take a look here and see how this goes. Yeah, I actually found ZVZ to be my strongest matchup at the moment. So really, a lot of matchup. people a lot of people feel that way just because it's it's against the race that you best understand. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing that your your build is a little risky on a two player map of a hatch first is a very ballsy maneuver. Mm -hmm. um, I would recommend going 15 pool 16 hatch. Because, um, I mean, right now he's going to have his pool finished and yours just started. Like, yeah. That's a really dangerous place to be in, especially if he were wanting to get aggressive. I mean, luckily he's not, so you're actually going to end up ahead. Yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. I would I would go 15 pool 16 hatch on ladder just to keep your, keep, keep your safe from a lot of things, at least more so than a hatch first. So yeah, I find like, the, most, uh, the most common opener I've been, is uh, a basically a ling all in that does enough damage that it's no longer an all-in. Mm. Yeah, uh, that... It is, is, is strong for sure. Um, if you're going to do some sort of speedling all-in though, you really have to get um, pool first mm -hmm. with uh, an Oh, I meant people that I play against. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. and so they actually... Uh, they play more with pooling up their lings rather than kind of poking and prodding with the first set and then you yeah. know, streaming them in once the economy gets kicked in. One thing you might try to do is, is get an extra queen in ZVZ and also put your banning nest at your natural. Um, just it, it gives you a little bit more ease of defending those speeding all ends. Um, and the way that you do hold those is you just want to get two queens on the ramp to block it as soon as possible, mm -hmm. um, transfer all your drones up into your main, and then just make a ton of banelings. Um, and uh, it's, it's really, though, it, it's more about those two queens on the ramp than anything else, though. Yeah. Okay, and so you go double Evo Roach. Mm, that was just more so to keep a wall in. Mm -hmm, yeah, and, th and that's fine. Yeah, but and then based on what I was scouting so far, it seemed like it was going with the speed thing. What did you scout it? Let's see. Game paused. Yeah, you've mm. seen a little bit. You really um, you need to be more active with sending links into his main. Um, so it you need two generally to be able to get a decent scout off instead of just one. Mm -hmm. um, so just do that like every 45 seconds to a minute, send two lings across and see if he's making units or if he's making drones. Um, it's just, uh, ZVZ is really dependent on, on scouting. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so here you're good, you're taking your gas. Um, 
your layer is really late if you're planning on going mutas. Um, but you got this Roach Warren, so you know I'm guessing you're you're not. I don't I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, most of the games I play, I I think I'm kind of still in the Wing of Liberty mindset, where. Mm -hmm. Uh, like the Roach and Fester style and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's Ling Bane Ling, and then it transitions to Roach, and then you get Jaleir Tech, which gets to Roach and Fester. Yeah, it's it's really it's it's more about that two base Muta style um, in in Heart of the Swarm because he's gonna have his Mutas out so much faster than yours, mm -hmm. um, and he's gonna have a lot more of them as well. So I think what you need to be doing uh, if you want to play that Muta style is again scouting and determining what he's doing, and if you see him droning you need to be droning hard and teching hard as well. So you can take those two gases in your main pretty quickly, start your layer, and then as soon as you start that layer, get those gases that you're naturally going as well. Um, and all the while, while you're doing that, you need to continue to scout. Um, because you need to make sure that he's not going to, you know, do some crazy two-base all-in against you, or, um, you know, you need to see what his mute account looks like. Uh, so you're... Uh, you might be okay, and you did the right thing there. Whenever you noticed that you were going to be behind in the mutas, um, or I don't know if you did notice it, but sending those links to his base to keep his mutas home to give you time to get yours up was perfect. That's e exactly what you need to be doing. Yeah. And so here you might lose this third. Ooh, yeah. You gotta be really, really careful with your mutas as well. And you had those like four spore crawlers up, but you didn't you didn't move them to your hatchery for some reason. Um, and then you also had a few injects on your queens, or not injects, um, transfuses, transfuses yeah. that you didn't use. Mm -hmm. So you, you could have saved that hatchery, I think, to be honest with you, with the support of the queens, uh, the spore crawlers, and your mutas. Um, you know, I think you could have held that. So mm -hmm. you might have just been a little bit too passive there and, and kind of gave up a little bit too easily. Um, yeah. But at this point, yeah, so he's got his third up before you. Yeah, I mean, there's almost nothing you can do from this point in the CVZ to be able to get back in the game. Um, you have to, like, take a really greedy fourth base or make something happen. But um, I think the best advice I can give you in CVZ from watching this game is to, again, scout and determine what he's doing so you know whether you have to play safe or whether you can, um, you know, go ahead and tech up. And then once you decide that you can tech up, you need to be doing it very quickly because your layer was just really slow this game um, and you, you kind of teetered between techs it seemed like. So um, focus on getting that layer up a little bit quicker, getting your gas out a little bit quicker as well and it will really help you with um, your muta timings but uh, with all of that just remember to scout too otherwise you're going to lose games um, you know really 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 one-sidedly. Yeah yeah certainly. But yeah um, because from, from that point, you know, whenever he's got his third and his fourth base up and, and you're just now starting to mine from that third, it's it's a, a pretty lost cause. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, do you have any, any final questions or anything? Um, I think the last question I have is actually ZVT-based. It's, uh, okay. uh, what do you think would be the best way... To kind of the deal with planetary fortresses when it starts getting into that later game. Like, I mean, from what I'm understanding, from what we've seen with ZVP and ZVZ, is that uh, I'm just not checking fast enough. Mm -hmm. um, um, you, Ultralisks will absolutely murder a planetary fortress. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're not using Ultralisks in your uh, ZVT, you need to start um, first and foremost because they are a fantastic unit now in this game. Yeah. Um, and that it's, it's the same idea as with... Um, ZVP as well, where you really want to be, it's like a rush to hive, um, kind of like defend, 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 get to hive, and then stabilize. Yeah. Um, so that's what you want to be doing in ZVT as well, and just, you can rely on those ultra-ling, ultra baneling, um, and you shouldn't have any problem killing planetaries with that composition. Okay, yeah, definitely. Alright, man, well, um, I appreciate the time that you've you know, taken to, to have a lesson and everything. Um, if you wouldn't mind uh, leaving me a review on the site. Yeah, yeah, definitely, we will do. Certainly so did I invite you to the group? Yes. All right. Well, um, uh, yeah. you know, feel free to message me on Skype if you have any questions. Ever, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm here to help. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, certainly. Thanks for your time. Absolutely, dude. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, certainly. Later. See ya.